Louisiana All-American. Sports Show, Louisiana All-American. Sports Show, Louisiana All-American. Sports Show, Louisiana. Louisiana, Louisiana, Louisiana All-American. Sports Show, Louisiana All-American. Sports Show, Louisiana All-American. Sports Show, Louisiana. Louisiana, Louisiana, if it's sports you want to talk about, then listen to the hottest show that's coming out the South. Is every head feeling Coach Perry Daniels, man. They're going to sit you down and tell you all about the game and make it plain. 96.9 FM, that's the station. To hear the best sports talk show in the nation. Without hesitation, you should get with this and get your popcorn ready, boy, you better not miss. Louisiana All-American Sports Show. Louisiana All-American Sports Sports show, Louisiana, all American. Sports show, Louisiana, Louisiana, Louisiana. It's Joker P. So fresh, so clean. Good yeah. morning, Baton Rouge. It is a fresh, clean, absolutely gorgeous Saturday morning in the capital city. <clears throat> and you are listening to Louisiana All-American Sports on 96.9 FM WHYRLP Baton Rouge Community Radio. It is carnival time. And, hey, it's a good time to be in Baton Rouge as opposed to, I don't know, Boston or someplace <laughs> like that. Uh, it is very, very nice this time of the year uh, here in Baton Rouge. This is Eric Hatfield. And this is Gerard Piper. And uh, you are listening to the show. So... Let's jump on in. Both feet. First of all, it's good to be back. Uh, felt I was having withdrawals. Uh, not, uh, you know, last Saturday morning, not really knowing what to do with myself. Uh, I was uh, taking a little vacation. hadn't taken one in years, and it was kind of funny to get up. And, uh, you know, I was, I was overseas, so I couldn't even wow. listen to the Louisiana wow. All-American Sports Show or call in or anything. So... Uh, that was uh, a little odd. I started to get the shakes a little bit, but I'm back in the saddle with How my man drawer. Feel? I'm feeling feel really feel? good, man. I'm feeling pretty good. I got those batteries recharged. I feel loose, r- relaxed, fresh. Woo. I feel I feel like I've got the wind back in my sails, much like the New England Patriots. And I know it's a, wow. it's after the okay. Super Bowl. I didn't I never did get my two cents in on that, <laughs> but uh, I guess the professor told us so on that one. Uh, Piper, how goes it today? Oh, man, it's going pretty good. It's a beautiful day outside. I want to say happy Valentine's to the couples that's out there. You know, today is about love. It's a parade um, today, Spanish Town Parade, big parade here in the, in the local area. So, hey, I'm pumped up, charged, ready to go. Let's get it. <laughs> yes, indeedy. So speaking of getting it, uh, uh, the McKinley Panthers, a featured act on LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com. Uh, they have been having a pretty good week this week. Uh, we'll go back to Tuesday. The Louisiana All-American Sports Game of the Week was uh, the McKinley Panthers as they hosted their District 5-5A rival, Santa Mar Gators. It was a very very thrilling finish uh, in that basketball game. The final score was 63-62 as uh, Keon Brown uh, hit a layup on uh, the assist from uh, uh, junior guard, last name is Hill, number one, uh, as time expired, gave McKinley the victory. So here we go. This is the ball game. Eight seconds. Got two timeouts. Left to play. McKinley does have two timeouts left. It's inbounded. There he goes. There he goes. goes. Hunter. He has a man open. He passes. He has Hill. This the key on Brown. And Brown hits it with one second left on the clock. And that's the ball game right there. I see you, boy. Uh, that was a big win they needed as they've been kind of, they were 3-3 three and three in, confer- in conference, in district play at that time. Yes. Uh, really needed to kind of keep themselves up in the power rankings and get their, that favorable seating. And then last night, uh, the Panthers, you know, we covered the Catholic High Bears at the McKinley Panthers earlier this year on the Louisiana All-American Sports uh, Game of the Week when Tolliver Freeman of the Bears went off, well, uh, and McKinley just could not keep up with them, could right. not keep up with them. Well, they avenged that last night as they went into Catholic's barn and uh, busted out the whooping stick on the Bears. Uh, the final score was 53-49 uh, in that game with the win over the Catholic High Bears. That drops Catholic to 6-2 and two in District 5, 5A play, and all of a sudden that, that district is kind of up for grabs. McKinley is only one game back. Bad, bad Keon Brown had 12 points, and Russell Daniels uh, had 10 points in that game. Piper, we, we've, we've... Man. Yeah. We covered them. We went um, to the game, actually, um, against the St. game, and, man, what a game. 
McKinley actually came out. They're, very, they're impressing me a lot this year. They're starting to grow as a team. They, and they I are. I want to give props to Coach Dotson for the job that he's doing down there. We covered them earlier against Catholic High, I, I think, and um, McKinley didn't show a lot of effort, and Coach Dotson at the time spoke about that, and he wanted more effort from his kids. One, one kid ended up getting um, put off the team or he quit the team, and it kind of opened up things, I think, for McKinley. They started to insert Keon Brown, which he takes up a lot of size down there, and was able to open up the guard. So, my big, big Keon Smart, you mean? Keon Smart. <laughs> yeah. Got a couple of Keons yeah, two, on the team. Keons, yeah. yep. Both of them are good, though. Both of them are great at the low post, but Keon Smart, the offensive lineman for the offensive lineman for uh, McKinley on the football side, they start to play him on the, in the basket on um, in the basketball. So he takes up a lot of space. They impressed me when they wanted at the buzzer because they controlled that whole game against Santa Mar. Even though Santa Mar was probably the, you know, the favorite going in, and McKinley was kind of struggling, but they came back, man, and played a beautiful game. Won it at the buzzer. They deserved that game. They they really fought hard. That was a, that was a really a, that was what high that's what high school basketball yeah. is all about. And the to Jimmy go back in Catholic and win on the road. It shows me where this team is. They they playing a different type of game now. They are playing more up tempo. Their, their defense has always been good, so man, they have, you know, big shout out to I, Coach Dotson. I'll tell you, I, I I I don't know if Coach Dotson had like a bag of, of magic dust or like a wand, but they they look like a, a very different team, a much more offensive team, a much more together team than they did earlier in the year. And we have on the phone. <clears throat> yeah. Ooh. Oh. Tr say that one more. Say it one more time, Coach. <laughs> coach Perry Daniels. We got Coach Perry Daniels in the his house. How's it going this morning, Coach? Super fantastic, man. Um, and, and I believe, Joker, you, you said that McKinley made some personnel adjustments. It made some personnel adjustments. Um, the forward, I mean, the power forward they had. He actually played center, center too, Nick Wiggins. Wiggins, yep. Um, had some disciplinary problems, and he ended up coaching up not playing him in a game. And um, he got upset about it, and he decided to walk away. But in actuality, even though he was one of their best players, from what I'm seeing, by them being able to play insert Keon Smart, he gets more time. It kind of opens up the offense for McKinley, and, it, and he takes up so much space. It's kind of like Big Baby down there. Yeah, it really is. This guy's over 300 pounds, at about six foot six, and he's not the best offensively, but he takes up so much space. He's a good rebounder. If he can stay out of foul trouble, it opens up McKinley's perimeter game, and it seems like they're playing better, and they've been winning since he's, he's left. They have, and the one thing I noticed with the big man, and I, I, did, I didn't even really make this observation until watching the replay of the game on LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com or on YouTube, but, uh, you know, Keon Smart, they, you know, like you said, he's kind of, he's not, he's not the most polished offensive player, and it looks like when McKinley starts moving that ball around and starts to pick up their pace, the defense looked like they played off of him, and then they left him open for, for you know, what do you call them, chippies? Right. Easy layups. Right. So, I, I'm impressed. I mean, Tulane University signing for football, mm -hmm. uh, which is where he's going, where his meal ticket is for the big guy. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but, you know, this reminds me of McKinley days of old. Yes, and, uh, yes. The professor can speak, speak more to this, I'm sure, being a part of that McKinley basketball family. Uh, but we've seen this over the years to where... Back when they were in 6-4A, and 4A was the highest classification That's in the right. state, and, and they would have the first round and second round format, McKinley would always struggle in the first round, come back, win the second round, and win the district championship game to win the championship, <laughs> and then go on from there. So this is really a part of McKinley basketball history, the way that Coach Dotson has this team yelling near the playoff time of the season. Yeah, this is refreshing. This is this is a, this is for me. Of course, I've only been covering the Panthers closely for the last two or three years. This is this is new for me. This it's refreshing to see. It's a whole. It's a, it's a different, more exciting brand of basketball, and I, I think they're loving it there on on McKinley on McKinley Avenue. Oh, I am definitely loving being an alumni of of the Big Blue Machine. I also want to give a shout out to the guy Kyle Woods. This is a guy I've been noticing has been taking the lead number three leadership role, and he's been. Man, this guy plays with a lot of poise. And it just seems like players now are just stepping up and taking a leadership role. Keon Brown has really he is. become the leader of their team. This guy makes three-pointers. 
and hey, man, this guy has a high ceiling. And he plays with a chip on his shoulder yes, too, and, and you can see it. He's and you can see the confidence. I am really looking for. Of course, they will. The McKinley Panthers will once again be our hosts on the Louisiana All American Sports dot com game of the week next Friday, February the twentieth, at. Uh, at uh, 7 p.m. in the bottom, so make sure you have your, your internet fired up and, and, and check it out. I think it's going to be a very exciting game. They're playing Woodlawn. Uh, that's their district finale, and uh, it's going to be uh, it's going to be an exciting one. There's a lot to play that's for. Right, get your popcorn ready. Yes, sir. Um, there was a lot of action in the Baton Rouge area last night. The Louisiana All American Sports dot com uh, game of the week uh, featured uh, the District 6 1A matchup. The Madison Prep Academy Chargers visited their district rival Christian Life Academy Crusaders uh, to uh, give you a, a PG, a paraphrase of the hip-hop poet BG, <laughs> it was real, heads got bust, blood spilled. Uh, <laughs> that was, Madison Prep looks like they are Man. on... Uh, it's just I, I, I don't want to get in awe of a high school basketball team, but it was just something to watch last night. They looked so together, and they looked like they just kind of willed their way. The first quarter was pretty competitive. It was 16-13 at the end of the first. Uh, uh, Christian Life actually led very briefly in that first quarter, and the second quarter was like, okay, go. And they went, and it was incredible. Final score was 91 to uh, 91-44. Uh, it, was a, it was a scoring festival. Christian Thompson, 19 points. Brandon Sampson, 18 points. Josh Anderson, who I, I believe is a freshman, 14 points. Yeah. It, was a, it was something to be seen. They just looked so together. And, I mean, Coach Jeff Jones, uh, I've always uh, admired the, uh, the man's ability to put a team together, but this team is at a completely different level. We had an opportunity to speak with Brandon Sampson, uh, one of the you know top players in the country, big star from Madison Prep Academy. Joe P caught up to him, and this is what young Mr. Sampson had to say. I'm here with the man of the hour, my player of the game, Brandon Sampson. Um, how do you think you, you know, your game was tonight? Um, I think we started off pretty slow as a team, but um, as we got through it to the first quarter, then we played into that hand, so in the second quarter, tried to make them play into our hand. So I think I played pretty good as a leader. Came out with a little energy, get some stops. Got a few buckets to get my team going. Yeah, I saw that in the second half. You kind of gave up a couple of shots with some great assist play, and I saw you had a couple of dunks um, that you had. So, second quarter, did, did you guys, did the coach tell you guys to kind of crank up the defensive pressure? Because it looked like that's the quarter that you broke it open. Uh, we knew what we were doing. We didn't really have to tell coach much about what we were doing. Uh, we knew what mistakes we were making, so we just came out in the second half and tried to focus on what we were having mistakes on, and we did that a better job in the league. But, so. Okay. Well, I appreciate it, man. Great game to you guys. Good luck to you moving ahead. Thanks again. That was a he's a very uh, impressive basketball player, uh, yes, Mr. Sampson. He has a he's a commi he's a committee of uh, St. John's University. He'll be playing for the Red Storm next year, and uh, I'll tell you that's that's a young man we're going to keep our eyes on. He's one that kind of grew up before the eyes of the Louisiana All American Sports uh, dot com audience. Uh, oh, man. Coach, yeah. before I move on, just kind of run down some of the other scores. Did you have? Uh, do you want to kick in some two cents? You've had a chance to watch Mr. Sampson uh, develop and grow too, and uh, your insight is always uh, the, uh, always makes us a little smarter. Uh, it always raises our basketball IQs. Um, um, forgive me, gentlemen. I caught the end of the professor could join us. Awesome. Oh, hey. Okay. All right. Wait a minute. Hold got a, up. Got a full house today. Stop the presses. Go ahead, gentlemen, gentlemen, it is indeed I am enamored to be in your presence again. I am returning <laughs> from a uh, conference in uh, Alabama, which I will pontificate on at a later date. So let's address some of these sports things. Man, I miss you guys. Eric has been on a hiatus on a cruise with the, with the little, uh, uh, umbrella in his drink. <laughs> God, only knows, God only knows what. Mr. Piper has been doing in my <laughs> what he's been doing. <laughs> what happens brother, in Vegas stays in Vegas. And, and, and Brother Daniels, I'm sure he's had his loins girded in the wine press. I know he's been about the business. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Professor? Oh, that's another beautiful uh, Saturday morning on Louisiana All American Sports. Indeed, it is, brother. This is a privilege to be, privilege to be here. What we got? What's going on? Okay, so, uh, Professor, we, we just talked about. Uh, the McKinley High team went beating both of the top-ranked teams 
in their district this week. They had a really good week. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I, I mentioned how it's really good uh, days when uh, you were on the court for the McKinley High Panthers. And, um, and struggled. we saw those Teddy Brown teams generally struggle in the first round, come back in the second round, go undefeated, run the table, and end up ultimately winning the district championship when it was in that format. Um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, right now they, they, we just moved on to Madison Prep um, okay. and, and their slaughter of Christian life last <laughs> night. <laughs> wow. Was it, was it a slaughter? Was it, it was. was. Yes, did, Mc, did McKinley defeat uh, Salma, right, if I'm not mistaken? It was a th- so this week. This week they yeah. beat Catholic High and they beat Santa Monica. That's right. Okay. Okay. So they went. So they went to Catholic and got the win. And Correct. got the win. A convincing win. And with Santa Monica, they actually dominated that game. And Santa Monica only had one lead, and that was at the end of the game with eight seconds left. Right. Santa Monica finally had got a lead by one point. And with eight ah, seconds yeah. left, McKinley got the ball inbounds at the whole court. And I think what Santa Monica messed up at is they tried to press McKinley on that last play. Instead, instead of getting under the bucket. And setting up their defense. And when, when you break a press, someone is going to be open. And, That's exactly what happened. And Brown was open under the goal with one second left, and McKinley won at the buzzer against Santa Monica. Wow. Right, wow. it was exciting. Man, it was uh, thrilling. I mean, I... Santa Monica, isn't that Kenny, is Kenny Allman there, or is Kenny Allman at EA? Uh, it must be EA. He's oh, not... no, he's, a, he's actually in Zachary now. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. But so, I have, I have uh, some other scores if you want to talk about a couple yeah, more other run, games. Yeah, let's run through those other scores, yes. Fire away. I have some other scores. Did, did we mention Brandon Sampson's St. John University Fire? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. we did, man. Okay, he is, he, he was awesome last night. Uh, but the other scores that we have, University actually beat Lee 96-52. to 52. Um, <clears throat> DJ White, who was here at Louisiana All-American Sports, he only had six points, but these guys still dominated the game. Uh, Southern Lab won 66 over Kenwood, 66-30. to 30. Scotlandville beat Live Oak, 61-36. to 36. Now, Parkview Baptist actually upset Port Allen and dominated them. The score was 67-28. to 28. And Port Allen has a pretty good team um, with a the good guy that got Telson Allen. Um, East Ascension won 48 to 45 over Dutchtown, and uh, we, and Lutcher was 154 to 49. And Pittsburgh upset uh, Northeast 64 to 57. And those are pretty much the local areas. Zachary won 66 in a thriller, 66 to 64 over Walker. Uh, that's the that's uh that oh, is yeah and Bel Air Bel Air actually lost last night you know we covered Bel Air yes sir and all American good sports. catch um, Tara um, beat them fifty four to forty five so they came up a little short well look can can I give Bel Air a walk walk and Paul Johnson Paul Johnson point guard for Tara High son of former LSU point guard Paul Johnson and uh, Lee High graduate that's right. Um, his son, uh, I think, he had I, twenty I last night. Three threes last night. He had ended up with twenty points. He, he's the difference maker when those two teams play. A um, couple of other high school sports news. One, uh, the reclassifications came out last week, and we're going to see Woodlawn drop from five A to four A and join Tara and Bel Air in that six four A district. That is an also, interesting fit. Wow. Very yeah. interesting also, fit. Also, we're going to see uh, the two teams that we did at AllAmericanSports.com covered last night, Madison Prep and Christian Life, are both moving up to 2A. Mm. I, 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 Co- Coach Dale, Coach Stephen Dale, the Christian Life Academy Crusaders has got to be like, man, I thought we we're going to get rid of those guys. <laughs> but that's... Oh, look, yeah. We're uh, going with them. Christian Life is... Christian Life is going to be the smallest school in 2A. They were one student above the 1A level. Wow. <laughs> and they're a very well-coached team, but he's going to have his hands full with that. Oh, my goodness. Well, get ready for the do you, think, do, you, do you guys Do you guys think that uh, Madison Prep moving up, do you think they will be able to maintain the rigors of dealing with yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. yes, yes. That, no doubt. Okay. Because I think this team. I think this team, and I'm not. I, I'm, this is not hyperbole. I think they can beat anybody in the state. They can beat Scotlandville. They can beat 
uh, Riverside, they could beat any team in the state right now. I really believe that. If I'm not a gambling man, and I certainly would never bet on high school sports, but if I had money, I'd put it on the Chargers. And from top to bottom, they have freshmen that, that come out. They have right. freshmen. They have. It, it's almost like Kentucky, the platoon system. Right. It's not like even a starting five. It's like they bring in different waves of platoons. And it's, man, it's, it's something so, to see. So yeah. in hindsight, you're saying that Madison Prep has a program that they're going to be established for the next couple of years at that deep? No oh, doubt. they are. I mean, and we, P Piper and I made this observation last night. I mean, they could take, they could literally bench their five starters, and they could probably stomp every team in their district. And there's some good teams in that district, like Southern Lab and Christian Life, but they're just, they're just that they're good and that deep. They've got a, a a dynasty in the making. They got a freshman. Um, um what's his name? Um. Uh, which one? Josh Anderson. Joshua Anderson, yeah. <laughs> Joshua Anderson. This guy here is amazing. This guy took the ball. He's a freshman. Took it to the top of the key. Dribbled, shook a guy. Went in the paint two-hand and just dunked, you know, like. And he's he's very poised. He's not, a, you know, he makes the type of freshman mistakes, you know. But speaking of redistrict, don't mean to get off the subject. We talk about Madison Prep, but I wanted to get the professor's opinion and I wanted to get Coach Perry Dane's opinion. When we talked about redistricting, it made me think about the thing that's going on in Chicago with the uh, Jackie Robinson's team. Yeah, with the man. And I wanted to hear your opinion on that, uh, Coach or uh, Professor. You go first, Professor. Well, I, I, I'm kind of out of the loop on that. Okay, I'm really, I I'm really, I'm really hasn't been brought up to speed on it. I've been kind of dealing with this and kind of not really looking at the news and not I've been just... Yeah. Here's the important thing. We we understand. We depend on you for 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 a deeper analysis, <laughs> deeper issues. Well, this is the this is the rundown. It, it, basically, the Jackie Robinson West team out of Chicago that won the Little League World Series last year, which is uh you know it's, it was like urban renewal. You haven't seen a lot of these teams from the inner city with mostly minority kids. It They've been actually, visible for the last it few was years. And yet, the first African American team to ever win the Little League wow. World Series. Still, okay, okay. Yeah, I, them. I, I did hear about that. I did hear about. There briefly. There they are. Uh, they were they were stripped of their uh, crown because they uh, they were used. I think multiple pl three players or multiple players who did not live in the district and they and the they knowingly violated that rule. In other words, it wasn't a, a, a paper mismatch. They it was done deliberately. So they were they were stripped of their title, which is unfortunate because between them and the Philadelphia team with Monet Davis, those were the two greatest, you know, most awesome stories coming out of the Little League World Series, and, and well, it, it puts a, a stain on it. It's really unfortunate. It really is. But uh, that's, yeah. What, what, do what, what, do you, what are your guys' takes? Well, to me, to me, it doesn't really stain it, and this is why. Um, it, it wasn't as though they gained a competitive advantage. There were no kids that were over the age, which we have seen some other uh, teams in the past on um, to the World Series and have kids later determined to be ineligible because they falsified their birth records. Right. So it wasn't that situation. These kids just happened to live a couple of streets over than, you know, the, the, the zone that uh, they should have been in. So to me, um, as President Obama said, it takes away nothing from what those kids did on the field. Agree. They right. they won. They beat everybody they played. That's right. So uh, I think that this is only the third time in the history of Little League that they actually um, done this. The other time it was um, two minority teams. One of them was Amante. He was a little. Well, older. I remember that. And the time before that, it was a Philippine team. So it was to me. It was this is the third time. It, this has only came up after they won it. I think after the Las Vegas team maybe got to complaining. It's a little deeper than what we're uh, than what we're saying. From my understanding, this is actually the third time that they investigated mm -hmm. the team for the same thing, the redistricting. And the first two times, nothing came about it. But just so happened this time, they got the decision that they want. So it's kind of in there. Also, I have to look at the rules too. So I try to you know look at it objectively. But I don't know. It just has a bad taste to me about it. It does. You know, Dor one of the ladies for ESPN who covers this, it's either Doris Burke or Chris McHenry, and I always forget which one it is, but one of them said something very profound. The only way, the Little League World Series is so pure and so you have the, the innocence of youth and you, you see it on the field. It's what's compelling to, to us as viewers about it, especially with this team. And she said the only way the kids could, kids make the, make this Little League World Series, the only way it can be screwed up is by the adults. 
and that is what we have here. Right. You know, you have uh, the findings. The findings of the investigation was that the the violations the vi the violations were intentional, which means you have grown folks, and I think it sends the wrong message from the coaches or the managers of the team. You have grown folks that are basically sending a a, a win at any a win at any cost message to these young people, and that's that's not the message sports should be sending. You know, uh, it's it really. I, it, I agree, Eric. You know, I agree, Eric, to an extent, but but here's the key. If they don't win, there's no violation. This happens every day in Amazon. That's right. Sports. That's, That's what I was going to say. It happens. The AAU rules mm. state that you are not supposed to play on teams outside of your state. But we see it all the yeah. time. Mm. Not local stars in Baton Rouge. Mm -hmm. right. They play Good on point. Texas Fair. teams. Ooh, they play Perry on went there. Teams. <laughs> you know, so, so it, 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 it's right. I just... We see this all the time when it comes to teams uh, that disturb the established. Right. To me, it's like a selective thing. You know, it's like they'll use the use the rule when they on just selective things. Absolutely. And it's not it's not over. You know, across the board, and that's that's where I kind of have a problem with it because I think we have this happens all the time. And another thing, this is a little league world series. I can see redistricting when you're when you're playing against your own hometown, but when you're representing the whole state, you know why not have the best people of your of that Chicago area? Because you're playing, you know, Japan. You're going to play international and national teams. So. You know, I, I think a lot of rules of amateur athletics that I use, I don't use the word stupid very lightly, but I think a lot of rules of amateur athletics are stupid. The NCAA, I could just beat with a stick all day long, so I'm not going to, I don't have to punch on them today. Yeah. This is another example of where the rule is stupid, but, and you and I were talking about just stupid rules, stupid laws last night, just, right. uh, just talking about life uh, yesterday on the way home, but... And here's the but. The rules are the rules. That's right. And the grown folks knew what the rules is, and again, knew what the rules are. Uh -huh. And they know, and according to the investigation, I've not had a chance to research this thoroughly, if they willingly violated it, they knew what they were doing, and it's hard. It, I feel awful for those children. For kids. Those right. children played like champions. And I, 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 my heart hurts for them, and I don't say that lightly. But the adults, I just want to wrap them over the hands. And as well as those kids played, they could have won the title or at least made it to the finals without those three players. Whatever competitive advantage they thought they were getting, it is not worth this. And it's the, it's the grown folks who made the decision that, that, that put them in this position. It, it just, it really, everything about this story is, it, it weighs heavily on me. And from all, and all the other angles you're bringing about the fact that they did bring this up, that they didn't do this maybe a little more quietly, or, I don't know. But it, it, again, it starts, the accountability starts with the grown folks, and, and that's where my, 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 my the feel like the clinch in my gut is really right now with this. Well, that's America. Uh -huh. <laughs> let's move on to, let's, let's move yes. on to, uh, uh, Oh yeah, we got it already set up here. You know, uh, this the song I had for this week was this music for your mind section with Joker P on the MIC. <laughs> it's actually going to be Slick Rick, and this was another guy that actually came into the game and kind of changed the game. He was he was different. He was from England. He had an accent. He had a um, a, de a, a flow in the delivery that was a lot different from the norm that we had been hearing at that time in the '90s. So, and one song that he had it was called Hey Young World. And it was really a song that um, had a lot of powerful messages in it back then. And that's what I wanted to debut today. So I hope you like it. So check it out. Hey, young world, slick red. Hey, young world, slick red. <laughs> hey, young world, slick red of the world. <laughs> Uh, that that I, I always like Slick Rick, man. That's a uh, good choice, man. Good good music for the mind, there, buddy. The ruler. <laughs> oh man, that was a that was a great. Uh, I, I, like I said, I I, I like when Joker uh, goes off and does that. Matter of fact, it's safe to say that they would rather switch than fight. Class is in session. Good evening, WHYR listening audience. And again, I would like to thank you for tuning in. First, I want to say, Eric, did Joker have his fist in the air? 
<laughs> oh, 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 I know he did. I know he did. My <laughs> ship was in the air on the bus. At any rate, thank you for tuning in, listening to our show. I am very excited today. As always, we want to issue our disclaimer that we want to pontificate not white history, not black history, but the true, the true quintessential essence of history. And today's topic, I want to briefly iterate on the Southern Conference of African American Studies, which I have attended at Alabama State University. And today, and the weekend theme was uh, paying homage to Booker T. Washington a hundred years later. Booker T. Washington died in 1915, and seeing that in uh, 2015, we wanted to discuss the state of affairs with Booker T. Washington and where we are today. We know that, 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 that there has been an ongoing debate about Booker T. Washington as well as W.E.B. Walk. But I want to share with the group some information about Booker T. Washington that I found out so timely and it was very interesting. Booker T. Washington was a disciple of Samuel Armstrong, who was the founder of Hampton University. Hampton Armstrong was a uh, missionary whose family descendants were from, uh, actually were from Hawaii. But they came now, and he was a former Confederate general, and he sought to set up an institution to educate illiterate blacks. Booker T. Washington showed up at Hampton with 50 cents in his pocket and a will to do. He went there and became one of Armstrong's prized students, one of his prized students. But however, Armstrong's theory was a theory of appeasement. Booker T. Washington adapted that theory and set forth to set blacks on the path of vocational <laughs> trade without agitating the system for civil rights. In fact, Booker T. Washington himself was called the Apostle of Appeasement. Booker T. Washington sought out to say blacks themselves are not actually fit for franchisement into black society mainstream as of now. So stay in your place, be subservient, and create a workforce that, 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 the, that the dominant culture would substantially totally need you, and then you would be accepted. So we discussed all these things, and one of the brothers uh, discussed a book called The White Architects of the Black Education very powerful book, very, very profound book. The book states why we believe what we believe and why we were taught this. That's another talk show at another time, but we, we really in depth about Booker T. Washington and, 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 and his position with black America. Some call him, uh, if you will, a sellout. Others, others, others hold him in high esteem as removing the veil of ignorance from the slaves. I know I don't have a lot of time, but I just kind of want to give you a brief overview. I could talk about this for about two hours because I have Me so too. much information. But I just, I just wanted to throw, share that little brief snippet with you that that we discussed the ongoing debate with W. B. Du Bois and Booker T. Washington and what Booker T. Washington's relevance was to the black community. However, I'm inclined to believe that they both were very important, but we will never capitulate uh, on either one of them because they both were very relevant and we needed the synthesis of both of them in our community, and that's my contention. So remember, in closing, always investigate the information you receive. If it is indeed the truth, verily, it shall stand the test of investigation. Peace. Class dismissed. Oh man, Professor, I can't wait till you get back in the barbershop. That's a topic I could we could we could we could do it whenever you know we can get a, on a whole sidebar on that. I mean actually I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be back I'm gonna be back in the barbershop today, man. And also I wanted to say I didn't get a chance to mention it. I didn't I, I know Perry is aware of it because we talked about it briefly, but the Reverend Jeremiah Wright will be on our campus at Southern University on the nineteenth of this month in the Cotillion Ballroom. I wanna invite everybody to come out and bear witness to that. That should be really interesting. That's what's up. Absolutely. Indeed. 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 It's amazing to me that that debate is still going on in our community to this day. The, the yes. debate of yes. appeasement or self-determination. Hey, um, yes. Yes. It's almost like the debate and, between and, and, the Malcolm X and the Martin Luther King back in the days, you know? And, and, and Harry, as you said that one, one of the brothers from... <clears throat> 
the University of Alabama Birmingham brother uh, daughter said that this is another divisive method that the dominant culture uses to make us choose. That 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 is the precursor to the Martin Malcolm scenario. We don't need you to put a put a line, draw a line in the sand, and make us choose. Right, absolutely. You know. And, and that's the method. And ahead, oh, the, the movie, uh, I saw the movie Selma a little, which first of all was an excellent, excellent picture uh, as far as historical documentaries go. I, the, young, the fellow who played Martin Luther King was really good. But, uh, you know, the movie Selma, they really drew that contrast. Uh, there was a vi they didn't talk about Malcolm X too much, but there was a brief contrasting moment right before, it was set right before Malcolm X was killed. And it really showed how one need not be in conflict with the other, but can have uh, synergy with the other, how... How you need you know both That's right. can help advance the message. I won't spoil the plot, but there was a very poignant scene when when Dr. King was in the slammer and his wife came in, and and Malcolm X with with his um, I guess with his image to the uh, the dominant culture, if you will, helped promote Dr. King's agenda. So um, you know I think I I think it's a fascinating topic. We can go on this one to, to the end of the show. Um, but, uh, but, but you know, if our station manager, Alexander Perlis, is listening, maybe there's a slot for Conscious Hour. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, but we are a sports show, and, of course, uh, today is Saturday, which means we have a fantastic slate of college basketball. Whoopsie-daisy. Yeah. Let me try that again. <laughs> well, I'm slipping today, one week out of the saddle. Before we uh, go uh, all across the nation, we got to talk about our, our boys here at home on the bluff. The Southern University Jaguars are blowing and going and humming and drumming. They are two games back of first place in the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Uh, last week, they had uh, they. Uh, they split, had a split. They had a win over the Grambling Tigers, Professor, uh, and uh, they dropped one uh, against Jackson State, both those games in the F.G. Clark Activity Center. Uh, today they travel to play Arkansas Pine Bluff. That game will be at 7.30 our time, and on Monday they uh, uh, travel to play Mississippi Valley State. That'll be at uh, 8 o'clock on Monday. Neither of those games has uh, any television or, or radio coverage. Uh, the, the Jaguars... Well, they're, they're playing really good team basketball. They have good guard play. They're, they're hawkish under the boards. They should win both of these games, especially the Miss they should blow away Mississippi Valley State that just just I, I think I think Madison Prep might be able to hang with them. <laughs> uh, and uh, Arkansas Pine Bluff, uh, while they're going on the road and Pine Bluff is a competent opponent, just looking at the talent, I think the Jags are better. I think so too. I think the Jags this should be a big win for them. Going um, to Arkansas Pine Bluff, um, the Jags are doing pretty good in the conference play. They're eight and three in the conference play. The two games out of first place, actually, even though they have an under below five hundred record. But here lately, they they've been playing really well and inching their way up, inching their way up. And this is the time you want to play better as a team. Exactly, and that below five, that sub five hundred record is a reflection of of Coach Banks getting that team ready. So like hitting the weight room, they put them against some some major opponents. They they had some. I think they did some growth during those games in spite of the losses, and you're starting to see it in SWAC play. They've, they've played very well. That's I right. just wanted to point out a couple of hometown heroes. Jared Sam of Scotlandville High, averaging six boards per game, and Traylon Banks, of also of Scotlandville High, the son of Coach Roman Banks, averaging ten points per game, two assists, and a steal per game. So... Uh, we're going to keep uh, keep you abreast of those folks as that race continues on. Uh, on the other side of town, rolling quickly, moving swiftly in the hoopty ride. The LSU Tigers. I, I just, I'm just, I'm, I'm throwing my hands up with these guys. I, I they, you know, the Jekyll and Hyde. They're like a poor man's version of the Kansas Jayhawks in that they are a Jekyll and Hyde team. And that's hint, hint. We're going to talk about uh, that that big matchup coming up today. But uh, I, I don't, I don't know which side of the bed this team gets out on. I mean, they lose to Auburn, <laughs> then they, 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 they have a bare knuckles fight with Kentucky. They, they win big games that you think they are, in which they're underdogs. They they pull out tough victories and then, you know, then they capitulate against, uh, frankly, inferior opponents. I mean, I'm looking at the, the SEC standings. LSU, remarkably, is over 500 in conference play, five games back in Kentucky. I'm looking at the dead last team, which is Missouri, 1-10 in, in conference play. Guess who that one win was against? And it was LSU handing them the game. So I, 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 Look, they have Tennessee. At, they're playing at Tennessee today. Uh, the game is at 3 o'clock. I believe that's going to be on the SEC Network. Yeah. They should beat this Volunteers team that really doesn't do anything very well uh, offensively. But uh, I, I'm not betting the farm on it. So who are you picking, Tennessee? No, 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 no. I'm picking, 
I'm, I'm picking LSU, but I'm holding my breath till I'm blue in the face. Oh, okay. Well, I'm picking LSU also. Tennessee is actually going to be a great matchup. Tennessee is 6-5 and five also in the conference, just like LSU is. They're 14-9 and nine overall. LSU is 17-7 and seven overall. Actually, I think LSU is not doing that bad. I think they're um, right at where they want to be. They played a great game, I thought, against Kentucky. And those type of games actually give teams the confidence, even, at, even though they lost. So I, I expect them to go into Tennessee and beat Tennessee pretty handily. They came out with a mock. Um, they should. A mock, a, a mock NCAA selection for the thing, and LSU actually made it in. So, so far, they're on pace to be able to get inside the tournament here next month in March. So it's coming down. So I think right now, you know, he has these guys right where they want to be. So, but today is going to really tell. They got to win this game. It's, today is going to tell. Um, so moving on to the wide world of college basketball, we have a couple of really big games coming up, uh, today, not the least of which is at the very end of this. Well, I wanted to get professor. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. We Guys. Need y'all picks. Yeah. I got to get you what I, what I told you. So I know I got to get well, professor. Well, 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 Good catch. well, I'm going to take LSU in that game. And I want to also reiterate, not, not reiterate, but iterate initially that, you guys slept on my Florida pick. I know I had you on the ropes. I know you guys thought about me when Florida was manhandling these boys. All three of you guys, I need you to bear witness to my supreme wisdom. Supreme man, man. He won the game. He won the game. Okay, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> but, however, but however, I know Perry was like, that damn professor must know something because he went down to the wild and Florida had a meltdown. Okay, now, now you can talk. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I want to get my words in. I want to get my words in on the slack. Uh, it was a disappointing loss for Southern to lose to Jackson State at home. That hurt their chances of winning the yeah. regular conference championship. Yeah. Um, so that that's, that's yeah, going that to be hard. yeah, it's going to be a real challenge for Southern to, to climb past Texas Southern mm -hmm. as well as catch Alabama State. So. Um, we'll just have to see what happens there. Um, with LSU, they blew their chance um, to solidify their NCAA selection with beating Kentucky. The last uh, two minutes of that game just blew their chance. And unlike <laughs> the graphic that you saw, Joker, um, I don't think LSU is going to be. Uh, I'm pretty certain they're going to be on the outside looking in. They're going to be a pretty good uh, NIT team, but um, I don't yeah. think that they're going to make the NCAA. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It was an at-large uh -huh. bid that they had. They did a they did a mock yeah, at large yeah. selection, but you know, you know, it's, it's it's actually interesting to watch somebody else besides myself put on the purple and gold shades because Piper's been a a, a vassal of optimism here, and I I I share Coach's opinion. I think. The Kentucky loss was a quality loss, and that helps, but they, they've let games slip that they shouldn't. They've got to win this game today to have any – I think they, they, they lose this game, they're out, in my opinion. So, ah, boy, the Kansas Jayhawks, uh, some, some very competitive basketball. The Kansas Jayhawks, ranked number eight in the country, they will play the number 16 Baylor Bears in a Bear Knuckles Big 12 slugfest. You know, um, I, I don't really have any skin in the game as a fan, but I, if I were a fan of the Jayhawks, I'd kind of have that throw my hands in the air feeling kind of like I do with LSU. Now, Kansas is playing much better basketball than the LSU Tigers, but you just don't know which Kansas team is going to show up. Uh, you know, if they're going to just put ghosts on the floor like they did with Kentucky or, or fall asleep like they did at Temple or, um, or keep teams in the game that shouldn't be like with the TCU game. You just don't know which team is going to show up, or sometimes they can blow the doors off opponents from the get-go. Uh, you know, they let Kansas State back into a game, which Kansas State, I think, only had less than 20 points at halftime. You just don't know. Uh, they clobbered Texas Tech uh, last week. They have Baylor. Look, Kansas, when they're, when they're playing well, and Perry Ellis, uh, not the fashion designer, but the basketball player, is on his game. This is a young fellow averaging 13 points, seven boards a game. Uh, a real, you know, he really, uh, he's a physical player. He's quick. When he helps take over a game, you can you can turn the lights out. Baylor is, is the opposite, though. They play very uh, very tough defense, and they will they will punch you in the mouth if they have to, and they will clobber you under the boards if they have to. Very physical team. They don't score a lot of points. They don't win with a lot of offense. But you have guys like Rico Gathers averaging 13 right. boards a game, and uh, you know kind of uh, kind of reminds me of the of the college version of, of maybe a more svelte Keon Smart. Where you get that man down low. I mean, you can forget about it. You're not going to beat him. You you can only 
really hope to contain him. Uh, this game is being played in Kansas for the I told you so segment on will pick Kansas, but again, I'm holding my breath because I don't know which team is going to show up. They should get up for this game, should, but I don't know. Guys? I think Kansas all the way. I mean, to me, it's not even a no-brainer. Huh? Baylor has, has, hasn't beaten Kansas in Kansas in a long time, and Kansas is ranked number eight in the country. So Bill Self has his team, even though they – they're pretty much always, to me, they was always an underachieving type team. They came in a lot of times number one, and they'll get to the tournament and lose early in the tournament. And uh, Bill Self kind of has a reputation of doing that. But against Baylor, this is kind of a rivalry game there. Um, Kansas has a two-game lead here in the Big 12. And so I think Baylor uh, played a close game with them before. They played once before in Baylor, and Kansas won that, barely won that one. But So I got Kansas because Baylor um, – from the historical record from his shows, from you know their history, they don't win in Kansas. So I'm going with Kansas. Gentlemen? Are you still with us, Professor? Uh, I think we lost okay. him. Okay, so um, Gavis is a rebounding machine mm -hmm. between the nation uh, for Baylor, but that is not going to be enough for uh, the Baylor Bears to win in Lawrence. So uh, Kansas is undefeated at home. You, you've got to give this edge to the Jayhawks. Um, before we move on, though, real quick, Joker, do we have an entrepreneur segment this week? No, we don't have an entrepreneur section this, uh, this morning. Okay, let's roll on. All righty. And uh, we'd like to remind everybody that uh, coming up in about seven minutes, we have Noel Jackson, Noel Jackson. with music, music satisfaction. satisfaction. Here on 96.9 FM, WHYR, LP, Baton Rouge, Community Radio. Now, back to the sports. Another big matchup today uh, in the Big East. Uh, the Villanova Wildcats uh, are going to uh, strap up and ride against the uh, Butler Bulldogs. Butler ranked number 18 in the country. Villanova at number 6. We've seen this story many, many times before. That game will be at 5 o'clock. I believe that game is on ESPN. The Kansas game, if I remember correctly, is going to be on CBS. Uh, but anyway, 5 o'clock our time. This is going to be a very compelling game. We've seen this story with Villanova now for the last five or six years running. They have very good regular season teams. They get ranked very high, but they, 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 they kind of, it's almost like a space shuttle coming back in from outer space, and, and uh, all the astronauts always say when they come in, that, that, sh that ship is rocking when it comes back in, and it takes a while to get resettled. It's the same thing with Villanova. When it comes tournament time, their space shuttle starts rocking. And they seem like they wilt a little bit. Uh, you got uh, guys like uh, Javon Pinkston, who two years ago I would have said I would have expected at least be a, a, a second or a third team All American, and he's actually regressed. Um, he's not even averaging double digits per game. He's averaging 9.7 points a game. Uh, but I really expected more leadership out of him this year. In, sp in spite of that, Villanova is still playing excellent basketball. They're, they're ranked number six in the nation. They've only lost uh, two games this year. Butler, uh, on the other hand, is. is and they are they are they are a team that you knows how to use all their pieces uh, very well. That's the best way I can describe them. They don't have very strong guard play, but they find ways to get to the basket. They're quick. They're smart. They try to take the high percentage shots. They get the 50-50 balls. It's going to be interesting to watch. Now, look, here's the key to the game, in my opinion. I think if Kellen Dunham can get going early, that's their, that's their star player. That's the straw that stirs the drink for those guys. 17 points per game from that young fella. If he can get going um, and they can get uh, Cameron Woods, the um, I'm sorry, and Cameron Woods, the fine forward, if he can get them some points down low in the post and, and get some of those 50-50 balls and take advantage, I think Butler will have a fighting chance. However, this game is being played, uh, uh, this game is being played at Butler, and I think that also helps tip some of the talent that maybe the, the Bulldogs might be short on compared to the Wildcats. That being said, it's another game. I guess I'm going to not get a lot of, do a lot of breathing today. I'm going to hold my breath <laughs> and pick the Villanova Wildcats. But the, mind you, in this game, uh, Coach Jay Wright did mention that uh, Daniel Ochefu, the, uh, the forward, uh, I believe for disciplinary reasons, he might not start today. I don't know if he's going to be benched, but uh, that could factor in, too. He's a, he's a very good defensive player. I'm going to go with Villanova, but I'm going to hold my breath until I'm blue like Villanova blue. Hey, I'm going to also go with Villanova in this one. I think Jay Wright has his team in a good place right now. They won five straight wins in the Big East. Um, early in the year, they got they got plummeted by Georgetown early in the year, and that kind of set them back a little bit. People thought Villanova was not going to be as good this year, but they've rebounded from that. They've won five straight. They've been on a little tear. They've moved their way up the rankings to be able to get ranked number six. Butler, is, on the other hand, is also overachieving this year. They lost their their coach, you know, their young coach, I think he's at Brent Boston. Brent Stevens, yep, with the Celtics. He's with yep. the Celtics now. And um, so they're overachieving this year. So it's going to be a pretty good matchup. I think it's going to be closer than what people think. 
but I'm going to go with Villanova on this one. You're going to go with Villanova as well. This is going to be a really good basketball game. Yes. Uh, um, Villanova, you know, as Joker mentioned, the Georgetown loss. The other loss was to Seton Hall. Um, and, and Butler hasn't lost many games either, but one of those losses was to Villanova at Villanova by 12. So you've got the revenge factor here. Uh-huh. And I'm going to to step away from the consensus here. And I'm going to say Butler is an upset at home. Um, I just think that they have the talent to do it. And the, the home crowd is going to push them over the top, which is going to tighten up that Big East race even more. Coach okay. Barry Daniels has the Butler Bulldogs. Hey. Oh, you got him on? Okay. We'll see. Hey, I'll tell you what, Perry. Like I said, I am holding my breath on that one. Um, just a couple of quick notes for our local boys at the institution of Hi- Institutions of Higher Learning. America's pastime did get cranking last night. The Southern Jaguars busted out the whooping stick at Lee Hines Field on Baton Rouge Community College, winning 6 nothing. Coach Fernando, Pue- Assistant Coach Fernando Puebla is back on the bench for the Jags. And uh, LSU defeated Kansas last night at Alec Box Stadium uh, with a 4-1 win. Uh, Cade uh, Skivik had a, a three-run home run that really blew the game wide open. So we've got about, uh, well... It's about that time of uh, about that time of the day. Is uh, any parting shots, gentlemen? Well, I have some parting shots here. Uh, we got a couple of minutes. I want to give shouts out also to um, my my boy uh, Mayweather down there, McKinley, and he's part of the mm-hmm. alumni, and they actually have a McKinley alumni basketball game, and it's going to be Thursday, April second, twenty fifteen. It's the nineteenth annual um, <clears throat> McKinley alumni basketball game. So we're going to have some of the old guys. It's going to be. Down there, I might. I'm gonna be down there myself. You know, if I'm taking oh. my little, you know what I mean. Louisiana All American Sports dot com shall be in the building. Yeah, yeah. You know, I might work Absolutely. on my jump shot. You know what I mean. So <laughs> I don't want to get too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I thought that was. I thought that was reserved for former uh, basketball <laughs> players. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't really make it on the court. You know. <laughs> we have 60, 60 seconds left. Coach Perry, any uh, parting nuggets? Yes. Um, I really appreciate the three of you. I appreciate um, T. Johnson, Professor Johnson, what he brought today, um, as well as what he brings every week. That is important work that he is doing, traveling to Alabama State, um, speaking on the history of America, of America. That's mm-hmm. right. It is extremely important that we never lose sight of that. So uh, let's continue moving forward, guys. I love all three of you. Love you too, Coach. Are we ready for Thanks, the man. end? Appreciate it. All right, let's hit it. We always, as we always do, about this time. ADT J and S, love you. And have a good afternoon. Happy Valentine's Protect us from the evil. Fear to the king. Lives of love. May he protect us from evil.